I never thought hope was anything other than a thing with feathers, described in a poem as perching in the soul, never asking a thing of us, or how hope was composed in birdsong by a poet who defined the voice of a confined bird and rhymed it with freedom. This past year I've thought about hope, that word, a word holding so much weight in a world filled with uncertainty. Spending time alone at home for months during isolation and separation from family and friends has caused many physical and mental scars. The cost of time lost could never be healed when restrictions eased or how we watch leaves change colour from the same spot as we daydreamed afternoons away after just waking up. In a poem about rain, I painted Belfast skyline with city gulls and chimney cliffs, never imagining that I could be landlocked during lockdown or would spend so much time filling my mind with what ifs and where I could have been by now amidst the rise over vaccines and social distancing. Retreating to nature, I looked up at the morns during an August downpour, metaphoric rings of mist circle sleeve donnered. A waterfall I spotted was flooded and Newcastle was nestled quietly below clouds that faded into the sea. To my left, two little girls in pink welly boots held each other upright. One at a time, balancing on one foot, the boots came flying off. They ran into a puddle muddled with soggy socks and dirty water and screamed with absolute joy. There it was, that split second. The tonal shift I needed lifted by human connection interaction, hope. Hope this time rhymes with smiling eyes above masks in the line for the bus. Hope followed that lorry driver home after unloading crates one morning. He went out of his way to get my mum's soda bread on her way home to bed after a night shift in the NHS. Hope is in the actions of business owners respecting their staff and their lives outside of work. Hope is homeschooling the children before work, the rushed Zoom meetings in your pyjama bottoms or needing days off for mental well-being. Hope is in every person working for the community, the charities, porters, key workers taking responsibility, constantly risking their own lives for others. Hope is when profit takes a back seat and we retreat to the things that really matter seeing family, spending time with friends, embracing the natural world, witnessing life coming alive again, rediscovering the beauty of where we live, waiting for the darkness to lift at the end of the tunnelled cliff under Musadin Temple, for the breath of light to show downhill beach from the train tracks and to see the city I know all too well open its arms on the banks of the foil. And with life comes time, or the lack of it. The sand in our worldly hourglass is running out at a catastrophic rate. Recent warnings of Gulf Stream collapse means that switching to a greener way of life is not only essential, but we face an existential threat. The tipping point for humanity is acknowledging that what treacherous rain one day after an extreme heat wave is a clear warning sign and not just an inconvenience to our everyday lives. When we were affected by the threat to our lungs and bodies, principle and morality worked together. Funding was put in the right place and we, as a human race, united, which literally changed the world by fighting the unforgiving virus. If we treated this crisis like a crisis, then why are we not doing the same for our planet, which is struggling to breathe and dying every second? I never thought hope was anything other than a thing with feathers, described in a poem as perching in the soul, never asking a thing of us. But I'm asking something from you now. The fact we're still here means there is a small window of hope. To set our bird free and save humanity, leaders need to act responsibly and take the confining cage away completely. To seize the only time we have left, right now. Then, and only then, can hope become change.